Um, so next up will be Grace Flanagan um, from Q, Herbarian Handbook, Collecting Knowledge and Expertise from Around the World. Hello, I'm Grace Flanagan, and I'm a curator botanist at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q. And today I'll be talking about the Herbarian Handbook. Um, the first edition of the Herbarium Handbook originally came out in uh, 1989, following the success of a uh, diploma course on herbarium conservation. Uh, after that was published and it was super successful, two further editions were published, both in 1992 and 1999. Um, however, recently we, we were coming finding that the old book of 1999 really didn't cover uh, current methods, both using DNA extraction and also the digitization project. Um, so a new edition was proposed. Um, and with this, we wanted to expand the idea of what the Herbarium Handbook could be and focusing also not just on what Q knows, but what people know from around the world from herbarias, both big and small. And so the most recent edition was published in 2003. <laughs> so the Herbarium Handbook was made as a guide for both new herbaria to start up a new collection. And it teaches herbaria how to do everything from collecting plants, the policy behind it, uh, to also what buildings will need to be. But it can also be used for existing herbaria that want to update their practices or are thinking about building new facilities. So the in the past, herbaria have been very much cut off from the rest of the world. Um, these areas of academia haven't been really open to the public as much. Um, so with the update of the herbaria in the handbook, we will be able to help the public be, act, be able to access these collections both through databases and also online publications that can help people access this information as well as also the Herbarium Handbook focuses on increasing uh, public engagement and outreach programs so that way we not only allow access to the collections but also tell people from around the world what are we doing and why is it important to the future of scientific research and share these um, the pre share these um, preserved specimens for centuries to come. So I'm just going to highlight four herbaria that are highlighted in the Herbarium Handbook. So the first is the Cambridge Herbaria, which was opened in 1760s, and it contains over 50,000 type specimens. Some of these have been collected by Darwin, Hooker, Henslow, and Wallach which is very impressive. And I got to actually visit it earlier this year and it's beautiful. Um, but they also do a lot of outreach programs, both working with volunteers from the university, but also with public engagement activities. Next is the Boger Herbarium, which was opened in 1840s and they contain over 17,000 type specimens. Um, they mostly collect from the Malaysian region, and they do have some that are also from mainland Asia, uh, but they have a lot of really interesting globally and historically significant collections that help with international research. And if anybody's looking to do floors for that region, they have a lot of it, great information for people. The next is the Makino Botanical Gardens, uh, which was opened in 2000. And they focus on the flora of Kochi and Myanmar. And they have a lot of really great public engagement programs. They have over 200 volunteers. Uh, and these volunteers help out with conservation activities, such as they had some specimens that experienced flooding. So the volunteers are helping to preserve these specimens. They also have the ability to go to research lectures and also task demonstrations, so they learn what the scientists are doing, so that way they can get more involved and help out with these tasks. The last herbarium is the National Herbarium of Guinea, which was opened in 2009. 
Um, and they were really focused on the, using scientific research and policy in order to protect the natural world and are doing a lot of really great local community programs. And that's all. The uh, Herbarium Handbook will be for sale during NATSCA for 20 pounds cash. But if you can't, uh, if you don't have any cash or you're not here today or online, you can find it at the Q shop. Thank you.